Good evening and salutations, my Days of Our Lives fans. Let's start off with Ray and Beth. Start off with Ray and Beth for a minute. So, Beth, what still baffles me about going to this man's hotel room by herself goes in there anyway. And Ray offers her a part in, um, you know, the Possession movie. She's going to be playing this the psychic. I can't remember exactly what her name is, but she said, I mean, he was like, you know, you get to sit down and play the psychic. It's going to be great and yada, yada, yada. And you make a lot of money. And, you know, Beth is like, all right, so if I do this, then you want me to sit there and stay silent about I'll pass. And she pretty much kind of toils around for about get 15, 20 minutes. And in the end, she signs the paper. Regardless of the fact that she was like, you know, it feels like it's a sellout. And, you know, um, I had to do a lot of stuff to sit there and get where I am, yada, yada, yada. And I was in the B movie and all this other stuff. And in the end, she wanted to sign the paper anyway. Um, Ray did make it pretty clear that, like, <laughs> you know, it would be a good idea. For you not to say no to me. And, um, yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I gotta be honest, every scene with Sarah is just exhausting. It is annoying. And, <laughs> I, I just, I don't have the patience for her. Um, just being all loud and everything like that. Like, she comes in, um, you know, she comes into the delivery room with Anna and Tony. And, you know, because Anna's already upset about this whole thing. And, you know, Sarah comes in. Sarah's like, hey, listen, I got this paper. And, um, you know, it's going to, you know, you sign this paper or whatever and we'll get the lawyers to get you a divorce. So at this point, you know, Tony just looks like he's stalling. Now, Xander comes to talk to Maggie because Maggie was, you know, calling Jake like, hey, um, yeah, about that meeting that y'all had that, you know, no one else knew about. Yeah, yeah, we got we to gotta talk about that because cause that, that was not part of the plan. Um, and Xander comes in and Xander pretty much tells um, Maggie about all of it, about um, the second person who tried to, you know, impersonate Sarah. And now that, you know, she, you know, thinks that she is Renee, Dumont, or whatever her name is, um, tells her all about it. And it's like, hey, listen, we need to get Sarah out. And in order to do that, um, you got to sit there and sign this paper to more or less commit her. And Maggie at first is like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to sit there and commit my daughter against her own will. And I sat there was like, wait. Let me get this straight. This woman thinks that she's somebody else. She clearly could be a danger to herself and pretty much anyone else. He's telling you, hey, sign this paper and this way we can get Sarah the help that she needs. And Maggie says no. And I sat there like, are you, are you, are you serious? So... They wind up going down to the Demero place. This is after. This is after, you know, at first, you know, Maggie's like, you know, it's probably not a good idea for you to sit there and come with me, because you know you're you're still with Gwen and everything like that, and you know you still love Gwen and this, that, and the third, and you know now Xander's like, yeah, I do love her, but at the same time. You know, I was going to sit there and marry Sarah if it wasn't for that, well, pretty much everything that happened. But, you know, at this point, Xander's like, ah, oh, we, we got to sit there and, you know, I, I just want to make sure that Sarah gets the help that she needs. So they get down there. And, of course, the minute that they get there, Sarah says, like, oh, you look old. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, it seems just so exhausting to sit there and watch. But... Anyway, Sarah starts yelling and just acting all erratic, and it, it just it just got to be a headache. But um, she's all like, "I'm leaving," and this, that, and the third. 
Um, and so she tries to walk out, but Kayla gets there. Now, it was funny, too, because, you know, Sarah's just kind of looking at Tony like, yo, you want to sign a paper? You want to sign a paper, right? And, you know, you got Anna over there like, oh, Tony, sign the paper. What are you waiting for? And, of course, the minute that they heard a bell ring, it was like, ah, got to say by that damn bell. Um, but Kayla comes in there, and she comes in there with a cop. Um and of course, Sarah just starts wilding out. And like, oh, you're going to move on my way, this, that, and the third. And I was like, I'm not even going to sit there and get into everything that's wrong with that whole scene. But they wound up committing her. And Sarah starts yelling at Maggie. And Maggie starts crying. And I'm just like, Ugh. So they get her down to the hospital. And Maggie's there. Maggie... You know, it's Maggie and Kayla and Sarah's like, oh, I can't believe you did this to me, yada, yada, yada. And she starts cursing at her and everything like that. And I'm not going to lie. The whole scene just got, like, really annoying. Um, so towards the end, you know, Anna's like, so so we're going to do lunch, right? You, you hungry? You, you want to go get some lunch? And Tony's like, oh, damn, that's kind of insensitive. And I, I sat there and I looked at that whole scene. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised by Anna's reaction. Now, listen, I get it. Anna's upset. She's pissed off at the way that Sarah was there talking to her. Um, pissed off at the way that, you know, Tony is sitting there playing along with this whole thing. But, you know, and Tony was like, you know, this woman has a mental illness problem. You know, she has a mental problem. She just got dragged away. And you're just like, oh, let's just go get some lunch. You know, so he called her pretty insensitive. And I'm like, you know what? This isn't the first time that I've seen her just act um, insensitive or selfish or anything like that. I remember um, I was watching Beyond Salem. You know, and John was sitting there trying to get the, the jewel or whatever to do a case and or for, for a case. And Anna wants to sit there and get the jewel for um, Austin to give to Carrie because they were having a fight and apparently Julie was supposed to sit there and make that somehow better. So she decided to sit there and bid for it anyway, regardless of the fact that she knew that what they were doing were important. But, you know, Anna was just all about Anna. So when this scene happened, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm not surprised. So he's pissed off at her and, you know, she is just angry and upset, like, oh, was she treating me like this, and she, she treated me like that, and granted, she didn't really, you know, she didn't really sit there and think about how that was affecting Tony, you know, um, he wasn't, he was still upset about, you know, the way everything went down, and how he treated her, and her murder, and everything like that, and, you know, the fact that Sarah's not there acting like Renee is just dredging up all these painful memories. But she didn't sit there and take the time to really sit there and think about that. So at this point, Tony is like, yo, you know what? Listen, I'm not hungry. I'm good. And I think more or less he kind of just like walks off. And Anna just has this ditzy look on her face. Like she just doesn't understand what's going on. Like, like she's not really fully grasping it because she's too angry. Um, Like, oh, you're taking her side and this, that, and the third. And it's like, no, you're not getting it. And again, once again, I feel bad for the people who are Anna fans because from what I understand, she wasn't always like this. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not just saying that she deviated that far from her character. But whenever I sit there and look at Anna, I always sit there and it's I'm always reminded by Lucy. You know, Lucy, the person that you see if you watched her in a hospital was not the same person that you saw, was not exactly the same person that you saw on um you know, like poor Charles. I mean, yeah, she had a little zany moments or a little cookie moments or whatever, but there was a lot of times where she had serious moments and you felt like you couldn't take the character seriously. But when she got on General Hospital, she just became a joke and a punching bag. I mean, just well, not a punching bag, but like she just became more of a joke. Um, and it just kind of really just, I wouldn't sit to say watered down her character, but it was just like she was there for comic relief. 
more or less. And this became a dingbat. And it's the same way I feel like in Hannah's case. Um, so what else is going on? Um, all right. So Lonnie and Abe are sitting there talking about um, Eli and you know what happened. You know when went down or whatever with the um, the drug dealer and everything like that. But here's the thing, though. What I don't get, and this is one of those things where I'm just like, really, Lonnie, you're a cop. You're supposed to be a detective. Pretty much she told Abe that Eli was investigating Ray. You know, want to sit there and make sure he was on the up and up because he had just a really bad and terrible history. So let me get this straight. Your husband is investigating your bio dad. And then he gets shot in the park. And you don't bother to put two and two together. He's doing an investigation on a man with a really dangerous and criminal past. And the minute he started doing that, he got shot. Now, yeah, I understand it was about a drug deal. But come on, seriously? I, I just, I didn't understand, like... Like, there's nothing, like, she's not there talking about this. And I'm just like, how are you not putting two, to two, two and two together? I get it. Her husband's in the hospital. He got shot in the head. And, you know, he pretty, she pretty much had to sit there and perform CPR to sit there and kind of, you know, get a pulse back in her. So I get that her emotions are high and, and everything like that. But I'm like, come on, bro. You literally just said this whole sentence. Like it was breadcrumbs. And somehow you and your dad didn't sit there and say, well, gee, my husband snipped in and investigating a really dangerous man or a man with a really dangerous and criminal history. And now he's dead by a drug dealer who also happens to be dead. Hmm. Like nothing. Um... Now, Kayla does come out there, and you know, she came out there twice, but the, the last time that she came out there, she was like, you know, Eli's on surgery, and um, I guess they're going to sit there and just wait and see what happens. Now, my prediction, again, is that he's going to be in a coma for a little bit, and, um, you know, you probably won't really see him that often, because, I mean, when it comes to these soap operas, Actors, vacations, and stuff like that. Sometimes sit there and kind of get away and reflect and just kind of rest and recuperate. It really depends on the storyline. You know? It really depends on the storyline. You gotta sit there and write these characters a certain way to kind of like temporarily write them out without killing them off. You know, it's the same thing with Philip. Um, same thing with. Lucas and Sammy and stuff like that. You got to sit there and write these people out or write them in a certain way where they're able to sit there and do other stuff and if they want to come back. So it's it's interesting to sit there and say the least. Um, also, I know a lot, of these, a lot of some of these actors, a lot of some of these, I know a lot of these actors, specifically the one on, on Days, also is in a show called The Bet. I'm not going to lie, I kind of watched a little bit of it, and it didn't really seem like it, like the acting seemed pretty cheesy, but to be fair, I only saw like clips of it, and I probably should watch the show from the beginning, um, when I decide to get Amazon again, when the boys come out, and I can kind of sit there and see it for myself, so I'm pretty sure that, you know, a lot of times these actors are down, <clears throat> down the show for a little bit is because they're, you know, doing other projects or just kind of resting. Now, Abby, you know, runs into Gwen, and once again, she runs a theory of, you know, Gwen being an accomplice to um, her kidnapping. But of course, she says all this stuff without any proof. So Gwen is just there arguing with her, like, well, why would I sit there and kidnap you, and yada, 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 and I don't really know that much about Ava, and this, that, and the third. And so they're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And um, 
Yeah, at this point, Gwen gets kind of desperate with the argument, like, oh, I knew you would want to sit there and track down Sarah because you don't want me to be happy and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, sweetheart, seriously? But of course, Xander walks up on her, which I'm not going to lie, I didn't like the way he like walked up on her like that. Like, I didn't like the way he walked up on Abby. And it was one of those things where it was like, man, I wish Chad was there because, yeah, Chad... I have problems with Chad. I do. But I know Chad would have looked at that scene and would have wanted to whoop his ass. Um, but then it comes in there and he pretty much kind of defend, <clears throat> defends Gwen, blames Abby for, you know, the drug in the first place being put into Sarah and practically tells her, you know, you don't really have any proof. You need to sit there and just go away. So Abby more or less is just like, you know what? I'm not going to deal with this. So she just walks off. And um, I don't know if this was in Xander's mind a way to sit there and kind of declare who he's going to sit there and be with. Because, you know, he's still sitting there struggling. Now he knows that Sarah's back and Sarah never really left him. But now he's also with Gwen. And this was one of the things that Abby said, which probably really wasn't necessary. That if Sarah, you know, if he knew that Sarah was alive, I mean, if he knew that Sarah never actually did the stuff that he did, then most likely Xander wouldn't be with her. Which is true, but that's beyond the, um, that's, that's, uh, it is what it is at this point. So I'm just wondering, what is Xander eventually going to do? You know, what is he really going to sit there and do? Is he going to sit there and be with Gwen and, you know, because, you know, he came to her rescue and he said he loved her, this, that, and third. Um, you know, the sad part is that if he leaves her for Sarah, I'm not going to feel bad for Gwen. I'm not. But on the other hand, I sit there and I look at this whole situation. I'm like, so you want to be with the woman that is going to want to change you as opposed to being with Gwen who's going to accept you for who you are, flaws and all. Because I'm going to be honest, um, I'm not really into the whole couplings thing, but I, I really didn't like a lot of the times when I saw Sarah with, with Xander because she always sat there and tried to control him. She always sat there and tried to change him and was always disapproval of like certain things that he did. And it's like, yo, at the end of the day, like you got to accept him for who he is. And, and, and again, when Xander sat there and tried to change for Sarah, it was like, this isn't the way. You don't change for somebody. You change. You don't change to be a better person for somebody else. You change to be a better person. If that person just happens to love you because you're a new changed person, that's great. But you don't do it for somebody else because you're not really doing it for the right reasons. And nine times out of ten, it's not going to stick and it's not going to last. And we saw that when Sarah, you know, broke up with him at the time. I mean, this dude went back to killing people and just not giving a damn. Um, so when he's not there contemplating between, you know, who he wants to pick, I'm like, I mean, I'm not exactly a fan of Gwen, but I'm not a fan of you changing yourself to be with somebody else. So uh, it's, it's hearsay because, I mean, let's be honest, we all know exactly what's going to wind up happening. He's going to wind up leaving Gwen for Sarah because I already feel, I already feel like he has one leg already out this relationship, and he's kind of just going through the motions at this point. Hmm. Anyway, let me just double check my notes. Yep, I think that's about it. So with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. See you in the next video.